Welcome back for video 3B in our Hoverboard for Robotics series. If you're looking to use the strong and fast motors from a hoverboard and control them with a joystick for something you can ride on, or just for maybe a utility base like this that you can strap some different things to, this is the video for you. In video 1 of the series, we talked about what's inside a hoverboard and how you can make use of the various parts. In video 2, we learned how to hack the main control board so we could upload our own firmware and define some different behaviors for different uses. In video 3A, I showed you how to set the control board up to accept serial commands from an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi or other computer, and how to use the ROS hoverboard driver so you can now control a hoverboard base with the robot operating system. In this video, we're going to use a pair of potentiometers. In my case, they're mounted to a joystick, and we're going to set up the firmware and control board to read those potentiometers with an analog to digital converter that's already on the control board. Now, these motors are very powerful. If you hurt yourself or someone else, you can't hold me responsible. This is for educational purposes only, because like any e-scooter, there is definitely potential for injury and property damage. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, to set your firmware up for analog to digital converter mode, i.e. joystick control, you can use either the Emmanuel Faru hoverboard firmware that we used in video 2 of the series, or you can use the Alex Makara fork that we used in video 3A. If you also intend to ever use ROS robotics or serial commands, you might as well just stick with Alex Makara, but uh, nothing is going to be different in this tutorial between the two. Once you've cloned the repository, open up that folder in your favorite editor, and first let's open config.h. In the past, we've uncommented defined variant usurp, but in this case, we want to define variant ADC. Again, I'll be skipping the do not touch settings section. And again, I still have not run into a board that has a variant pin mapping, but a few of the GPIO pins are different on one of the board variations that's out there. So that's something you can do if you need to. Now, before we use speed mode, and I'm still going to use speed mode for the control mode required, but depending on how you're going to use your hoverboard motors, you may want a different one. Speed, don't forget, in speed mode, when there is no commands, the motors won't free wheel. It'll actively resist movement. But one of the other modes, voltage or open, would allow free wheeling. So check the documentation for which mode you want. If you're riding it and you set the command to zero, you may want the motors to keep free wheeling, like when you stop pedaling on a bicycle. I'm going to stick with FOC control. You can limit the max motor speed here. You can also limit uh, max current. I have not messed with either of these. I did a motor speed limitation and in another file I will show you in a little while because instead of simply chopping off and limiting motor speed, I wanted the I wanted the ramp up to max speed also to be more gradual across the entire range of my potentiometers. So I did something somewhere else. Totally optional, but I'll show you how. Field weakening stuff, I don't know enough to mess with those. Extra functionality, uh, stand still hold. Um, you can read these descriptions for what these do, electric brake enable. These are things I have not experimented with. The usual inactivity timeout, whether you want it to beep when you're going in reverse. ADC margin has worked. The idea behind ADC Protect is that the analog to digital converter converts an analog voltage into a digital number that the processor can use to decide which speed and direction to move the motors. This controller uses 0 to 3.3 volts DC, where 0 volts is going to read a digital value of 0. And at 3.3 volts, it's going to read 4,095. So our potentiometer in the middle position is going to read a little over 2,000. In other words, 1.65 volts. If that potentiometer becomes disabled, the ADC would just have a floating value and the motors would behave erratically. The idea behind the ADC Protect is that we can have a weak pull down, something like a 100k potentiometer, pulling our analog signal to ground. Normally the potentiometer resting in the middle will overcome this and the device will operate however we move the joystick or potentiometers. With the weak pull down, it's going to automatically read zero if that potentiometer becomes disabled, which would normally end up being, I believe, a reversed value at full speed. But the ADC Protect is going to ensure that a zero enables a safety state and disables the motors. Now, it's probably a good idea, but it's only going to work if the potentiometers become completely disconnected. If, for instance, only the ground wire is disconnected, I don't believe this ADC Protect is going to work because your motors are going to be commanded at something like forward three-quarter speeds. 
So if you use this, and it's probably a good idea, it's almost mandatory to include an emergency stop that will disconnect power to the whole system, but also a brake system because if you're moving at 20 kilometers per hour and the motors become unpowered, they're still going to freewheel and you need some way to stop the device. Auto calibration enabled, this is super handy. Compare the manual calibration and I find that my joystick actually creeps a little bit. So even though I've done the calibration both ways, having this enabled allows me to quickly calibrate on the fly without plugging on a computer or the programming port. Okay, this section here about input format, this is about your analog to digital converters. And it tells you a little bit what all these different things mean. These are arguments for the constructor call, and they'll make more sense in a minute. Cruise control I don't know anything about. Debug serial. We're using USART2 for ADC mode. Um, so we want to make sure that's commented out. And if you want debug available, uh, you can uncomment debug serial USART3 in the serial protocol. If you're using a dual mode, you'll have to comment out this debug as well so that you can use the USART3 for serial control. And that's for dual input mode. So once you get past this generic stuff, you come to the section with the variant settings. And the first one is the variant ADC. That's the one we'll be paying attention to. And the rest of them, like variant USART, uh, we're not using variant USART or variant nunchuck. You could. That's not something I'm doing a tutorial on. And we're doing ADC control, so we can use a pair of potentiometers. First, we want to define Control ADC, that defines using the ADC as an input. This number just indicates priorities. So zero is the highest priority. If we're using, if we were using dual input, we want the ADC to have the highest priority. This would still be zero. A serial control would be priority one. These two defines pri input one and pri input two. Um, go back to the arguments that we just saw above that talk about the type, min, mid, max, and deadband. When you use the auto calibration, these min, min, max values, according to this note down here, are overridden with our calibration from the joystick auto calibration, unless we change this key. So you can just change it to something else, and a controller should take these values for the min, mid, max for your degree of potentiometers. It would require manual calibration where you set up debugging, where you record the minimum and maximum values read from your potentiometers by yourself and enter them here. Instead, I just like to leave these 00 or 4095. That's the defaults where they were. And then Using the auto calibration is very easy. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. This number three is the type. We scroll back up to the type of potentiometer. I think there's just a couple of choices, but I find auto detect works well. Middle resting pot should work too, because that's the type of potentiometer I have. Mine are 10K potentiometers that happen to be installed in this joystick here. So they go from zero ohms to 10 kilo ohms. And in the middle, they are right around five kilo ohms. So that's called a middle resting potentiometer. But when you do the auto calibration, that's detected for me. And then the one thing I had to change was this last number here, the dead band. That's the band of inputs in the middle of the center position of the potentiometer that is considered center. In other words, where we're requesting no movement and no turning. And that just allows a little bit of deviation for the potentiometers. If they wiggle a little bit or don't rest perfectly in the right place, they keep the wheels from moving. So I found, I found that even after calibration, sometimes I would turn the board on and the wheels would start creeping either in one direction or turning. So I increased this dead band to 200 and after calibration, I haven't had the problem again. These are define I found because after the motors were mounted, I found that everything was going in the wrong direction. So I inverted the outputs for both motors to reverse them by defining these invert directions. And that is all we had to do in config.h. Now from there, we can go to the command line and do make and make flash like we had before. But there's another option. We haven't talked about this and I'm not incredibly familiar with platform IO, but it is available as a plugin in VS Code. And this allows us to build and flash the firmware right here in VS Code without going to the command line. I find the command line very easy, but the one big advantage I find from using Platform IO is that after you do the auto calibration, this documentation says that if you use Platform IO, the values will persist after power cycles, and I find that to be the case. So for me, that's worth it. What I forgot to mention, if you're going to use Platform IO, back at the top of config.8, Notice where we uncommented the defined variant ADC. This is only read if you have not defined in Platform IO. And if you read these comments to use Platform IO, uncomment the desired variant in Platform IO. So in Platform IO.ini, which is in the root directory of the folder that we downloaded, we just have to uncomment. Apparently, these semicolons are a uh, comment in the Platform IO.ini files. And I did learn the hard way that if you forget to uncomment one, 
like it says here, it does try to build all variants and you get a bunch of errors and weird stuff. Then we can just build here, little checkbox, and then use this button to upload. I'm not connected at the moment, but it's the same procedure as typing make flash. You, you hold down on the power button and then you press the platform IO upload and it'll give you a status success or failed. Now I want to show you one way to set a speed limit, which isn't actually setting a speed limit, but for the joystick controlled set that I made, the speed in the steering was way too fast. I'm using it more for a utility device rather than a ride on speed toy. So here in the low pass filter in main.c, you can see where the code takes the input commands and it, it actually calculates the outputs for steer and speeding. These two lines I added myself for whatever it's calculating. I multiply it by 0.1, basically outputting only 10% of what it can do. I find that limits the speed to right around walking pace, but you can experiment with it, or you can, or you can leave this out and get full speed out of your hoverboard motors. Any changes you make here, again, you'll have to save and recompile and re-upload to the board. In the previous tutorials of this series, we've used the right sideboard connector that I've circled here, but to use the ADC to read potentiometers or a joystick, we need to use the left sideboard connector. On the left side board connector, one of the two colored wires is for speed and the other is for steering. I'm pretty sure it was blue is for speed and the green wire is for the steering control. So it's not like they read one ADC per wheel where you have to give them differential inputs like a tank or something. So in both cases, you want to give them 0 to 3.3 volts. Now to do the actual wiring, we are going to wire the potentiometers as an analog to digital converter. And again, if you're not really comfortable or familiar with these, watch my other tutorial on potentiometers as analog to digital converters, and that should help make this make a little bit more sense. We're going to start with the blue wire on the left and just do one at a time. So you're going to take the wiper from the potentiometer to, to the ADC wire that you're trying to send the signal to on the left side board connector. So we're going to connect the wiper to the blue wire. You can use a black wire for a ground. And the other end of the potentiometer needs to go to 3.3 volts, which is absolutely not the red wire. That is 15 volts or 14 volts. I don't recall exactly, but it is far too many volts, so unless you want to add a voltage converter, you can get 3.3 volts at the programming pin. Then we just have to duplicate the same with another potentiometer for the other input. If you decide to use pull-down resistors, you can't share them. You need one for each of the inputs, and those should be pretty high, like uh, 100k ohms or so. Now, looking at how I wired an actual joystick, it looks something like this and I just put a joystick in a plastic electrical box I got at uh, Home Depot. One thing I want you to note about this picture is that the placing of the resistor is incorrect. I had put that there before I had really thought about how this was going to work. It needs to not go at the joystick because if the joystick becomes unplugged, it's not going to do any good there. It needs to be as close as possible to the connector. So if the wiring to the joystick or the joystick itself gets damaged, then it can kick in and possibly do some good. Um, now this is your on-off button. I forgot to mention during wiring that my joystick happens to have a button on the top, and I just wired that in parallel with a hoverboard power button. It's just a thing of convenience, and if you don't have one, then go ahead and use the hoverboard power button exactly like I'm using this button on the top of my joystick here. And you'll hear that. That is your on sound. Press it again. That is your off sound. Um, so you go forward, back, left, right. If you ever turn it on, and you're not you're not touching the joystick and the wheels are trying to move a little bit they're creeping or whatever then this may need to be calibrated um, and the way you do that is just to hold this button down for five seconds and you'll hear a beep and then let go when you hear the beep and wait for another beep wait for that longer beep now you've got 20 seconds to move this joystick around move it to all the extremes and what the board is doing is reading how far this, this joystick can go in every direction and then let it go back to center and either wait for 20 seconds to time out or tap the button again and now it can interpret oh okay I know where the center is of its possible ranges of movement and that should be zero it should be stationary when it's centered uh, so that's how calibration works the last thing in the firmware I want to show you is in is in the source folder in util.c 
I hate to give line numbers because these are live projects and changes could be made changing the line numbers, but currently line 1525 starts a method power off press check. This method gets called every single round of the main control loop. And what it does is it reads the power button pin. If the button is pressed, it'll immediately set enable to zero. As long as this is set to zero, the motors won't be commanded to move. After it sets the enable to zero, it starts counting in a variable called CNT underscore press. So while the button is pressed, it delays 10 milliseconds. It keeps incrementing that value. And when it finally equals 500 or five times 100, it emits a short beep. Now, if you want to do joystick calibration, when you hear this beep is when you release the button. And then after a second, you'll hear a long beep. And then you can do the ADC calibration for about 20 seconds. Either when you press the power button again, or your 20 seconds has elapsed, you'll hear a short beep and you can continue operations. Now when you press the power button and you hear that short beep, if you let go and then you press the button again, instead of going into auto calibration, you're going to hear a long beep and the firmware is going to call this method called update current speed limit, which seems that you can update a speed limit there as well as the current limits for each motor. I haven't found the documentation yet on how it works and I also found it easy to accidentally enter that mode. So I commented that out so I can't accidentally enter that mode and mess anything up. And I just went to main.c in the low pass filter, and this is where I put my speed limit. Now another thing I added in my version, so I can use the power button as a temporary motor disable, is this line here, where, where I check the count press again without incrementing it. So if count press equals 10 times 100, which equals about 10 seconds, the board emits two short beeps and escapes this upper while loop and proceeds to check if the count press is greater than or equal to 10 seconds. Actually does nothing in this if statement. It's just an empty statement. But what it does do is that it causes the code to skip trying to enter the update current speed limit or the auto calibration. It'll skip both of those as well as the final else if, which is the power off. And as long as I wait until I hear two beeps, when I want to continue operations again, I can simply release the button and I don't have to power cycle the board. And it skips calibration modes and setup modes. For safety reasons, this doesn't make a valid emergency stop, but it is often pretty convenient to be able to disable the motors. Well, that about covers how to control your hoverboard motors with a joystick. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned a lot from it. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below. If you've done this and you have any tips, uh, or you learn something along the way, please come back and also drop those in the comments below. I also hope you're enjoying my book, Practical Robotics in C++, currently running number five at Amazon's bestsellers for robotics engineering books. So I just want to thank everybody for their support, their kind words, and their recommendations to others to give the book a shot. I really spent quite a long time trying to write the book that I wish I had when I first started in robotics to save all of you a lot of time and trouble. Please be careful with your new knowledge. Don't get yourself or anyone else hurt. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Time is always tight, but I have a lot of subjects I want to write tutorials on that build on the information in practical robotics in C++ and help you build even cooler autonomous robots. Thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you next time.